please join us as we sing for the processional hymn number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. If you'd stand, please, we'll sing both verses. Merry Christmas Eve, y'all. Hey. <laughs> it's good to see you, too. Dark as they, and all 
They love him too Welcome to you this night. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who came to us in such, such an incredible way. Of all the ways he could have come to us, our God saw fit to bring us this child born in a way much more humbling and frightening than most of us have ever experienced. I took communion this afternoon to two of our friends who are at St. Dominic, and I reflected that on this night, it's the night we celebrate anyway, on this night so long ago, Mary did not have a hospital. We hope she had a midwife. Tonight is another first for us. It's our first Christmas Eve service um, without our beloved Keith. If you've been to many of these, when you read the liturgy and the order of worship tonight, you're going to find that not one thing has changed. Well, one song, that's it. Everything else remains the same. That we might uh, honor his memory, that we might know he's, uh, he's around here keeping an eye on us and making certain that we celebrate Christmas as only Wells can. Tonight, uh, we'll be singing from the hymnal. You don't have song sheets uh, inside of your order of worship. You're going to want to keep that hymnal handy. We'll use it uh, frequently. And I want to invite you to simply move your shoulders around a little bit. Take a deep breath. And know that it is the present of Christ presence of Christ that enters in. And no matter what you brought with you across that threshold or that threshold tonight, no matter what you brought, joy or sadness, there is nothing that our God cannot accomplish in you and through you, be it joy or be it sadness. Tonight we remember those we have lost in this last year that worshiped in this very space a year ago. But we remember with joy that tomorrow the birthday party they attend will be like none other. Welcome to you this night. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you each and all. And also Jesus Christ is born to us, is resurrected for us, and is present with us in this very service this Christmas Eve. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. 
because our God is altogether worthy of praise. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God and worship now in spirit and in truth. On this Christmas Eve, or at any other time, it is a right and good thing to give thanks to the Lord. We do give thanks here and now, sincerely from the heart. Almighty creator of heaven and earth, you created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You deliver us and make covenant agreement with us as our God. You speak through prophets, priests, and people. In the fullness of time, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. At his birth, the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward all. We need such a song in our lives now. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Lord of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to remain seated and be in an attitude of prayer as we share together all verses of 219. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters gathered here 
let us share these words of remembrance and of faith. It is a very good thing for us to praise God and also to offer our heartfelt confession. We remember well how scripture says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always loved you with our whole heart, or even much heart. Here is the good news. News made flesh for us on that first Christmas. News we need to make it tonight. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This continues to prove God's love toward us. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, and may God's peace begin even now to fill our hearts. We come now to a time when we can make symbol of our own forgiveness and love for all who receive it by offering the sign of peace to others in our midst. Please take a few moments and pass the peace of Christ amongst yourselves.
All right, do we get enough peace passed? Peace, John. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding, right? Thank you. Well, let's stand and all sing together hymn 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please join me as we pray for our offertory. God, much you have given to us and much you require. As we spoke and heard of Mary this morning and the favor that you found with her, we know that you also find favor with us. As we look in how you have given to us. Help us look introspectively as how we should give back unto you. And we believe and we trust and we pray that what is given will be given with a generous spirit and grateful heart and will be further used to share your love, your grace, and your mercy. In the name of Christ, we ask. Amen.
And now, Almighty God, we lift these gifts to you, recognizing that they were never ours to begin with. And on this evening, as we celebrate the greatest gift of all, we pray that what we have shared has pleased you and that you would make of us generous givers of heart and mind and spirit and that tomorrow as we celebrate, we would see the need around us and we would share our generosity in those ways too. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we share these this night. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2, and verses 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes from Hebrews chapter one, verses one through four. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very beginning, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The word of the Lord. If you will, please stand as we read the Gospel of Luke, verses chapter 2, 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. <coughs> Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for them, for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors this is the good news contained in the gospel of Luke for all people praise, praise God we are thankful for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the word written in the and the word made flesh you may be seated
Hey, I'm back. Thank you all for always welcoming me into your holy family, and thank you for becoming a part of my holy family. So again, Merry Christmas. And before I sing, I'll say that I'm very nervous, and I think it's a good nervousness, partially because I'm scared my hair's gonna catch on fire, but <laughs> it's mostly a good nervousness because I'm familiar with y'all, and I wanna do well for you all, so I hope this is pleasing to your ears and to God's. <laughs> And 
Merry Christmas, y'all. We could all go home now. <laughs> Shepherds. I don't know if you know much about shepherds, but they were, uh, they were a wily bunch. <laughs> if you were with us this morning, you, you heard us talk a little bit about the fact that Mary, now Mary was not wily. She was poor and of lowly spirit. And now here are these shepherds. Of all the ones that God could call to, to see this child first, he called on shepherds. If we'd added the next few verses in the passage from Luke chapter 2, uh, here's what they would have said, you, what you would have heard. And this is from the translation, the message. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. No sooner had the angels ascended back into their heavenly realm than those awe-inspired, fearful shepherds said, Let's go. Let's get over there as fast as we can and see what it is that the angel has told us and, and if, it's, if it's even real or not. They probably were a suspicious lot. They followed the stars. They may have thought this was some kind of magic. Who knows? But as soon as the angels left, we're told, they said, come on, let's go. And I figure if a ragtag bunch of shepherds could be called upon to, to make this announcement, to go and see, well, maybe we can be called upon to go and see too and to make an announcement. But my hunch is that there were those among them that night that were doubtful. It just says the shepherds went, but they couldn't have all gone. They had a flock to tend to. And I'm guessing that maybe it was just a handful that were just crazy enough or frightened enough, or superstitious enough to say, we got to go and follow that star. In the last few weeks during Advent, on a couple of occasions, uh, I've shared with you an imagined letter, imagined, purely imagined, based on things that we read in the Bible. And tonight I want to share... Another letter. This one from a shepherd's perspective as we prepare for this holy night. This one's keeping a journal. Dear diary, here I sit. I'm the one left behind, not because they made me stay, mind you, but because I chose not to go with them. Somebody had to stay behind and watch the flock, and I said, oh, I'll do it, why not? It's all nonsense anyway. We all just got some bad liquor, I tell you.
Even if there was such a thing as God's angels, why would they visit the likes of us? It just doesn't make sense. I stayed behind because I'm smarter than the rest of them. I can see through this thing. I'm smart enough to know better, to know a drunken dream when I see one. I'm the only one among us that can even read or write. No wonder they were buffaloed so easily. Angels do not come to shepherds. They don't. They'll see. Wandering around in the night like that. There's another thing about this story that makes no sense to me. It says a manger for a bed. That this king is in a cattle trough. A place where cows and horses and swine, perhaps, even come to feed. No, I'm glad I stayed behind. It was the right thing to do. A manger for a Messiah. Should have been a dead giveaway. I was born in a manger. That's no big deal. My mother and father had nothing, so they lived in the back of the barn owned by the man they worked for. I mean, how could a king, a king, be born in the same manner as I was, in a manger, in a trough? It's just not possible. Is it? Well, well, maybe, maybe it depends. Could God understand our hardships so much, even the hardships of shepherds, that God would send a Messiah? A Messiah who came into the world in the same humble, simple way as me. I'll stop writing for now. I I think I hear my brothers returning from Bethlehem. And I wonder, what will they report? Those were doubtful on that night, some. And we've had our moments of doubtfulness too, haven't we? Don't be afraid, it's okay. It deepens our faith and makes us stronger. But tonight of all nights, any one of us could be writing, Dear Diary, This is impossible. This could not really happen, could it? And could it be that that my God knows the hardships of the world, even the hardships of shepherds, even my hardships so well that he would send a Messiah? And the good news is God does know us that well. And so we come tonight to say, Come, Lord Jesus, come. I believe. I believe. We've been living in some dark times recently, haven't we? Oh, lots of light and joy in all kinds of places. 
But this night, for many in the world, it's a dark night. And so we are the ones who have to say, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, the Word was light. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. Tonight, it was just barely dark when you arrived. And when we depart, it will be the deep darkness of a holy night. But you will take with you something that much of the world does not have, the light of Christ. I think I hear my brothers coming back from Bethlehem. And I wonder, what will they report? I invite you to join me now as we respond to the word. This is the word of God offered by the way of a broken vessel of a sermon. We pray that you listen and those who preach might hear the word of God. As a community of faith, let us make our affirmation together at this time using the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to stand. those that are able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We offer us a time now to share of our prayer concerns and our thanksgivings. Uh, I bring a good report from Jeff Parker's uh, father, who hopefully will be discharged early in the morning to go home. He's doing much better. Ted Murray uh, doing a little bit better tonight, but still dealing with the effects of the flu. Um, while I, Heather and I ran into one each other at the hospital, as we often do, um, but as I walked into St. Dominic tonight, I ran into uh, some of the first people that Leanne and our children met when we moved to Clinton, uh, Grady Terman and his wife, Missa. Some of you may know them. Uh, Grady's dad, David, is, uh, is dying, uh, may not make it even through uh, tonight. And so I told him that I would share that with, uh, with our church family. So uh, please remember David Terman and his family and others that you may have now. Nancy okay. Yes, sir. Our caregiver, uh, Christopher Johnson, uh, his mother's birthday is today and her death day is tomorrow. For Puerto Rico.
There's one prayer that's been answered. <laughs> hey, Bill. Remember Tracy, Shelley, Anthony, and Ricky. Let us join together and pray. Lord, please hear these prayers and all our earnest sharing with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of sin, and who seek to live in love and peace with one another. Please open your heart to God as we come to the time of making preparation and sharing in the holy communion of Jesus Christ with his people, the church. You are invited to come as your heart leads. No one is denied this table if he or she sincerely desires to come. As we prepare tonight, I invite you to take out your hymnal and turn to 242. There will be natural breaks between the consecration liturgy where we'll be invited to sing um, Love Came Down at Christmas, different verses. And before we begin, would you play that through for us once that people might uh, hear that Love Came Down at Christmas, listen so that you'll be ready. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, restore sight to the blind, free the oppressed, and announce God's kingdom come. Jesus Christ healed the sick, fed the hungry, and shared his life with sinners and the righteous. By way of his baptism, suffering, death, life, and resurrection, the foundation was laid for your church, O God. He is the one who delivers us from slavery to sin and death and makes with us a new agreement demonstrated and remembered in our baptism. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word, written, preached, and lived, and in his blessed Holy Spirit. Verse 1. On the very night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Worship we the God heard, Lord.
When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall be our token, love be yours and love be mine, love to God and all men, love for me and gift and sign. And so in remembrance of the mighty acts of God through Jesus Christ our Lord, we offer ourselves as a gift of faithfulness, praise and thanksgiving by his grace, a holy and living sacrifice bringing us into union with Christ's offering and promise to us. Where you are gathered in my name, I will be in your midst. In coming to this table on this Christmas Eve, we proclaim his first coming, remember his coming now and later, and experience the mystery of our faith. Christ was born to us, Christ lived for us, Christ died for us, Christ will be present to, for, and in us now. Christ will come again. And now, O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all who are gathered here and make these gifts of bread and cup become the body and blood of Christ so that in communing we may become for others the body of Christ in a sick, hungry, and wounded world. Bless us so that we might be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God. Amen. Amen. I don't know.
I want to invite those who are helping to serve communion to come at this time. Tonight we are celebrating by intinction, which is what we do each uh, Sunday at Wells. Tonight it'll be a little bit different, because tonight we really do have a common loaf. We'll all be duly sanitized. <laughs> and what we invite you to do is, if, you're, if you just absolutely must reach and take a piece of the loaf, we won't stop you. But tonight we invite you to come in an attitude of humble submission and prayer. And trust that the germs of two people are no greater than the germs of a hundred. And simply cup your hands to receive the body of Christ. You'll then dip it in the cup and receive. We'll take this, um, you'll receive and return to your seats. If you would like to come to the altar and pray after you've received communion, please, we want you to do so. Would you pass that? Oh, okay. Hang on. Because there is one body of Christ, is it not appropriate that we who are that body partake of one loaf, the body of Christ broken for you? This is the cup of salvation. It is free to you. When we remember Christ in this cup, Christ remembers us. There will be two stations here and here. I'd like to invite you to come and receive. We'll start at the back on each side if you'll come down the aisle to receive. The table is set and the meal is prepared. Won't you come this night? is the body of Christ broken for you.
join me in the prayer following communion. Now, O oh God, allow us who are many and different in Christ Jesus to become one in mind and heart in love, spirit, and truth. And now let us pray together. To the eternal God, God, we give you thanks for the special and holy mystery in, in which you continue to give yourself to us. Grant that we may know the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Tonight we are going back to a new, an old tradition. <coughs> One that we've done in years past, I know, because we had many, many candles uh, back here. Now, do you have a little candle? Does everyone have a little candle? You know what Keith's song was. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Tonight we go forth singing Silent Night, and the light of Christ will be passed around the room. At the appropriate time, the lights will be dimmed just so. We really want to get you weepy tonight before you leave. And we will behold the light of Christ together that is in this place called Wells, and we will be reminded that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. When you receive the light passed to you, and I've got two helpers here who are going to come up and help, they'll light the candle for the person at the end of the pew, and then you'll be responsible for passing it down. Remember, the light of Christ bows to no one. It stands up straight and tall. The unlit candle in turn bows as we should bow to the light of Christ for the candle to be lit. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to Silent Night 239. And Jamie, if you would give us a little intro while we're getting this started. <coughs>
invite you to stand. Let us sing that last, the, the first verse again. A cappella. And do what I do, just watch. Don't put your light down, just look around. And behold the light of Christ that you have in your hand. But most important of all, behold the light of Christ that you see in each other's face. I'm told I'm supposed to do a benediction now, but that means we have to leave. And it's all over until next year. But I want to share a benediction with you from Keith. Thanks for stopping by. Ever hate to come to the end, get to the last page, wrap it up, close it down, have it over and done? Me too. There's so much more, so much to share and see and do and say. But we've done some of it together. And there is still tomorrow and the day after. Thanks for stopping by and coming in. Your coming made a difference. We hope the same is true for you. As you leave, remember, we spend all our days and nights doing beginnings and endings. Some think that when the book is closed and the last page done, that's all there is. I think that closing is opening, that the last page is prelude to the next one, and that the time spent here is parent to the time that is still to come. Good journey. Later, perhaps. With these words, go in peace to experience the miracle of the Christ child. Be with your families, your loved ones, and to consider the love that is greatest of all with us now and always. May God be with you until we meet again. And we have one more tradition, I'm told, at Wells as we go forth. We wish, wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a happy